Hi there guys, it's Helen from Slim and Stylish. Thank you for joining me today. I'm a UK Stamping Up Independent Demonstrator and I'm here again with another Advent project. So I've been doing a project every day from the 1st until the 24th of December. And this one's slightly unusual because it's using Berry Burst. I've got fed up of greens, olives, reds, blacks, Christmassy colours. And I've decided I want to do something bright and pretty and a little bit different. So I've got this gorgeous Berry Burst box, which is for my secret Santa this year. So if you're watching my video and you are a poodler and you haven't opened your secret Santa yet because you're being very good and waiting till Christmas, can you please not look? Go away, because I don't want you to see what's in the parcel if you're the one who got it. <laughs> I'm terrible. I always peek and someone sent me mine and it's sat under the Christmas tree and I haven't opened it yet and I can't wait to see what they've made and I'm being really good because normally that would have just been opened. But this is what I've made and hopefully I've given you enough warning now and you've disappeared if you're a poodler. But it's got this cute little vanilla scented candle in it and that's going to sit in the box and be wrapped up and sent. So I'm just going to work through how I've made this and more importantly I'm going to discuss with you how I got the measurements for the box because I've had a few messages asking for how I work my box measurements out and how you can work it out around something you have especially when you might not meet something that is the same size as this. So I'm going to do that now for you and get on with making it. Okay. So you need your piece of cardstock, Berry Burst, mine's A4, but if you're in America your sheet of cardstock will fit as well because it's only a small candle. So what I've done is I've measured my candle and I've got a pen somewhere. I measure my candle on my grid paper and I'm turning it upside down so I have got the fattest part. It is just under three inches so it will fit quite nicely three inches by three inches squared okay so the way to work out my base is i want to add the width onto it so it is about one and a quarter so to work out my base it's just a big box i'm doing one and one quarter plus three inches plus one and one quarter and as it's a square I'm going to be doing that down and across okay so I'll just get my trimmer so I wanted to do it where it was one and a quarter so there's one and a quarter add that onto three so it comes to four and a quarter and add another one and a quarter on so you get to five and a half, adding it all the way along. And as it's a square, it'll be five and a half by five and a half. To make the base. So if I just use my scoring blade now, and I know that I want it one and a quarter on this edge, so if I take that to one and a quarter which is just there right on the edge of my scoring blade just just there and score it and I want to make sure that I've got it at one and a quarter every way round I'm going up and down a couple of times with this because it's cardstock so it is quite thick and the reason I'm doing it straight away with cardstock and not DSP is I've got to post it to my secret Santa and I don't really trust Royal Mail on being very careful with my project. So as you can see it's got the one and a quarter and one and a quarter and the three inches in the middle just like my diagram so I know this will fit my candle properly. I'm just going to use my bone folder to burnish it. Be a bit tough on it because it is cardstock and I do want it to stand up in a box. Okay, I'm just going to grab my snips and I'm going to do the windmill cut now. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to cut that straight up on that score line. Create a tab. And just chop a little bit at the top there off as well. 
so you've got a proper tab. Turn it 90 degrees and go again. Call this the windmill cut because when you fold them over, that will fold that way, that will fold that way and they'll all fold round so you won't get two bits on one side so it won't be fat on one side and a bit wider there it means you want it a square box you want it all to be equal so keep turning at 90 degrees and cutting up and tabbing it and turn straight up and tab it again straighten that up a bit because you can't see where the camera was but I can it wasn't straight and that bit there is not straight either okay so now you've got the start of your box I'm going to use fast fuse for this because it's card and card and it's going to be traveling in the post so it's going to get knocked and bashed around and I should have used my silicone mat so that that didn't happen. Let me grab it where... Where have I put it? I had it a minute ago. Oh, that's ridiculous. I had my silicone mat not long ago. There it is. Everything falls around. I put my laptop on top of it. Silicon mats are really good because it means you can go onto it with your glue and the glue just lifts straight off it so you're not going to be getting your work surfaces or your paper messy and dirty. It's particularly good when you're using liquid glue because you can just lift your paper straight back off it even when it looks like it's stuck. So just push those all in I'm so happy to be using bright colours again I love my bright colours I've really missed them through the Christmas period so that should now fit my candle in perfectly and it does it's just got a little bit of wiggle room around the side so for the top of this now, I'm going to be looking at it again with my three inches in the middle and I'm going to make it a square again. However, I want it to only run to half of there really, so I want it three quarters of an inch. Oh, ignore me, three quarters of an inch and work that round. However, with the lid, you just want to do something a slight bit different. So if I just get my scoring tool, my trimmer, and so I want three inches with three quarters on it and another three quarters on it. So it should come to four and a half. But instead of cutting it at four and a half, which is just there, I'm just going to move it slightly past just to that notch there. You see what I've done? I've just moved it a slight notch because I want this to fit as a lid over the top of my box. So I want it to be just a slight bit bigger. And do it exactly the same on this. So instead of cutting it at four and a half, which all of those add up to, you want to add just a, I think it's like, it might not even be a sixteenth of an inch, it's a tiny little bit. And then you're going to ignore that you've done that and continue with this. So you're going to go around and score it at three quarters. Now for three quarters, I will add, I'm just doing this the other side. And I did it at, on the other side for one and a half. So your trimmer tool, 
goes underneath on this side. So you've got one and two inches here, but you've also got one inch on this side. And if you're just doing a smaller me measurement, because this bit here will stable the paper from half an inch, whereas this one won't, for one of those small measurements, you're better doing it on that side because you can get the stable of the paper up here and it's not waggling around. Hope that makes sense. So for this, you've got three quarters and three quarters, and this is three inches and just that slight sixteenth of an inch. Okay. So we're going to come round and burnish this the same as we did the bottom. All right. Now before I cut it, no. I'll cut it first just so it sits sits still. You're going to want to cut it like the windmill again. Okay, so back round, turn it and go again. Turn it 90 degrees and go again. Ninety degrees and go again. So there we go. The DSP that I'm using for this is this gorgeous one, which I think still looks quite Christmassy because I think the little flowers could be little poncettas. That side isn't Christmassy at all, so I'm using this side. And now I'm just going to get the DSP to stick around the box to give it a pattern. So we've ignored that this is actually three and three and one sixteenth really, it's three inches to us because we've totally ignored that one sixteenth. So we're going to just go down by an eighth of an inch. So we're going to go to two and seven eighths of an inch and cut that. It should still be two and seven eighths of an inch because, yeah, I used that for the other one. So I knew that. And then for this, it was three quarters of an inch we used, wasn't it? So you just want to come down and go to five eighths of an inch and you just want to cut four of those and again I'm doing this measured on this side because I've got a long bit here to steady my paper you should need your trimmer for now I'm going to use my fuse just because my fuse was out you don't have to use fuse snail will do because you're just attaching DSP you just want to stick that in the middle there so you've just got a little bit of an edge from the berry burst underneath. And do the same on all of the sides. last one. Okay, exactly the same now. You just want to add your fast fuse to these little tabs that you've created and stick them together exactly the same as how you did the base box. Okay, so go around and just adhere them up. Pick 
pinch them as well because the fast fuse needs you to stick it. It's no good just putting it together and hoping it will stay. You need to, to push it so it will work. There we go. And then that should just be the right size to fit on top. But it shouldn't, well, let's take the candle out. It shouldn't really fall off on its own. That's quite a snug fit because of that 1 16th of an inch. Right, so to decorate this, I'm going to first of all grab a piece of Whisper White. So I'm just going to grab the one we did our workings on. And I'm going to punch it using the 1 and 3 quarter of an inch. Okay. And I'm going to punch a piece of the Berry Burst using the two inch punch, which is that one there. Okay. So they will just sit on top of each other like that. I'm going to be using the Santa Suit stamp set because that's nice and Christmassy and means I'm not making my box Christmassy. I better make the tag Christmassy. So what I did was I used the Have a Jolly Christmas from the set and I stamped that in Berry Burst. And I stamped that towards the bottom of my circle so that I had room to fit the hat on. Now for the hat I used my Memento for the outline. just put it sideways so it looked like the sentiment was wearing the hat and then I got my Stampin' Right marker and I used the brush end because we don't have Berry Burst in the um, Stampin' Blends but these will do just as good so I'm just going to colour this in this is great because who doesn't want a pink Santa hat I'd like a pink Santa hat I love pink. I'd have everything pink if I had the choice. So we are Berry Burst Santa hat. Now I've got my hat. I don't know whether you can see in the light. It's 3D but it's also very glittery. So what I've done is I've just put the Wink of Stella onto the hat and I've applied the glitter all the way over. gives you this glittery hat now and then I've got the fine tip glue this is amazing it works so good at making all of your projects 3d but because it's got this little needle here it means that the glue doesn't go hard on you so I'm just going to run the glue over the hat Okay, and then you've got the tricky job of trying to get the needle back in the hole, but it's worth it because you don't want your glue getting all, all stuck up. I don't know whether you can see, my Santa's hat has got a little air bubble in, so you just want to pop that out with your nail. Not doing that very well, I'm, I'm wobbling all over the place up there, so I'm just going to pop the bubble. So I've got a glittery 3D pink hat and I love that. So I'm just going to put that to the side to start to dry while I play with the ribbon. The ribbon is the finely woven half an inch ribbon, that one. Now to do this, I wasn't being terribly um, creative with it. I put a bit of fast fuse, so bring in my silicon mat. I put a bit of fast fuse at the edge just there. And put that onto the project and run it round. 
I've worked out roughly where it's going to stop, give or take about half a centimetre or a couple of eighths of an inch. So, like that. And then I put some fast fuse along the end of this ribbon as well. So that it sticks. I did exactly the same going the other way. run the fast fuse along that bit and run that up and over. So that was my ribbon and I just took the edge of the ribbon and created a little bow. Flatten it out so it'll stick on the box. Trim it. Oh, that's frayed. Let me trim it all the way. And then I'm just going to stick the bow onto the box using a couple of glue dots. Through my advent series I wondered what product I would use the most. I never really plan what I'm going to do until I sit down and just just make it and then I film it straight after so I don't really take a lot of planning into what I'm going to do. So I tried to work out what product I'd be using my most and I think it's glue dots. If you've been watching these all the way through You'll have a better idea than me, but I'm pretty sure it's it's glue dots that I use the most. There we go, and there's the bow stuck on. Now I've got the ombre accents here, which are these ones, and these are in some gorgeous colours, but they do have the berry burst at the end. So I've used the dark ones on the other one. So I'm just going to come down now and use these ones. Should we use these ones here? One. I love these because they graduate in size, not dramatically, but enough to look good on a project. So these ones were slightly bigger than these ones because I used those three on this one and I've used the bottom three on this one, but still good enough. That glue is still wet. If you're going to use the fine tip glue to do the make it 3D, just bear in mind you have to give it some time to dry because it doesn't dry instantly. So I'm just going to drop that on the top there delicately because I don't want to mess my hat up. And some dimensionals. One, two. And there you go. Two candle boxes measured out and hopefully that's give you an idea about how I make my measurements as well but if you do have anything that you want me to give you the measurements for I happily will but those are the boxes for my secret Santa this year. Hope you enjoyed, thank you for joining me and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye!